Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Well, thank you again for joining me this week. I think it's going to be an exciting week because we're going to unpack one word this week. Our focus will be on one word, a word that is asked when life just doesn't make sense. And the one word that we ask when life doesn't make sense is the question, why? God, why do bad things happen to good people? If you are the God who is omnipotent, which means all powerful, and you're the God that is omni-love, which means all love. In fact, the Bible says God is love then why does evil happen in our world? If you're all powerful, you have the power to prevent it. If you're all loving, you should be motivated by that love to stop evil. But yet evil, I mean evil, evil that is unexplainable, evil that is heart wrenching and heart crushing takes place. And when the, the, the nonsense of life takes place, the preeminent question on our mind and flowing from our lips is the question, God, why? One of the uh, number one um, Christian surveyors uh, in America who does analysis and surveys trends and surveys opinions is the George Barner Group. George Bonner um, is uh, probably the most respected person when it comes to uh, analyzing where the church is going and uh, capturing what people are thinking about issues of religion and spirituality. So George Bonner asked the question, if you could ask God just one question, what would that one question be? And here was the answer to the question. If I could ask God just one question, what would that one question be? Here it is. God, why do you allow suffering and pain? In fact, the fact that there is suffering and pain is the greatest cause of agnosticism and atheism. Atheism, the word the is the Greek word for God, or the, the abbreviation for God. A means against or Agnosticism means to be opposed to the idea of God. I mean, I mean, atheism means to be the opposed to the idea of God. Agnostic in the in the is formed from the Greek word no, gnosis, which is the Greek word for no. And an agnostic is someone who just says, I don't know. I don't know if there is a God or if there's not a God. Many agnostics are good people, moral people, and they want to believe in God, but their mind. And, and their experience is saying, well, I just cannot reconcile the reality of a all loving, all powerful God with so much evil that's in our world. And the three areas of evil, when we talk about evil, all evil can fall under three different categories. <coughs> Excuse me. And those three different categories are three different categories of evil are number one, human disaster, human disaster. And by human disaster, uh, I mean tsunamis and earthquakes and hurricanes, uh, things that take place in nature, which of course is beyond our control. Now, I will say this, that we are contributing to the catastrophe in nature because of our poor uh, environmental stewardship. But for the most part, we cannot control tornadoes and typhoons and tsunamis and for example, the devastating earthquake that ravaged uh, Haiti, that Haiti was already poor. And it was poor, of course, because of how the French, since the 19th century, French colonialism. Uh, but um, human disaster, God, you control the tornadoes, you control the earthquake, you control the weather. Why do you allow for human disaster? The second uh, cause of evil is human disease, disease. Why do people contract cancer? Uh, why are people born with certain diseases? Or why do 
people die because of the pandemic of COVID-19, disease, disaster, and then the final cause of suffering is human decisions. We make the wrong decisions uh, and we bring suffering on ourselves. Uh, we mistreat each other. That's human decisions. We get drunk, we go driving, someone is killed because of a decision we made to get drunk and to drive. These are human decisions and these decisions. These are the three areas of suffering, human disaster, human disease, and human decision. Now, here's the question. The question is, where is God in the midst of this? Well, if you've ever questioned, well, where is God because of disaster, disease, and decision, please believe me, you're not the first. There are people in the Bible who question God for the same reasons. There's a fella in the Bible, uh, his name is Asaph, A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-A-S-
And here is his clarity. Look at verse 15. Verse 15, he says, if I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I tried to understand, there's the word, why the wicked prosper. But what a difficult task it is. Then I went into your sanctuary, O oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. And where did he get his clarity? Did he get clarity at the bar? No. Did he get clarity just at home, feeling sorry for himself, musing? No. It says, then I went to the sanctuary, or he went to church. And when he went to church and got in the presence of God, wrestling with the prosperity of the wicked, wrestling with the adversity of the righteous, as a worshiper, he got clarity. And he came to understand the destiny of the wicked. In other words, God is still in control and that wickedness may endure and evil may endure and suffering may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. In other words, God has the last word. And this is what he learned about evil. This is what he learned about why God allows evil. Well, first of all, he didn't really, and no one really understands or can answer the question why but we can respond in faith. And this is what he learned. He learned Isaiah 61 verse three. Now you get this. It says to all who mourn in Israel, and you read this, but you make it personal, make it, put your city where you are uh, instead of Israel. For me, it will read to, to all who mourn in Louisville. He, God will give a crown of beauty for ashes. In other words, whatever ashes you get, ashes means destruction. It means something's burnt down. God's going to bring something beautiful out of the ashes. A joyful blessing instead of mourning. In other words, whatever's causing you to mourn, God says, if you wait on me, I'm going to bring something joyful out of that which breaks your heart. Festive praise instead of despair. Whatever is the source of your despair, God is able to bring something praiseworthy, something wonderful out of a bad situation. And in other words, what Isaiah 61 and 3 is saying is that while we may not understand why bad things happen, we do know this, that God is the God who's able to recycle evil. Just like you take bottles and cans and boxes and you set them out for recycle and then the recycle truck comes, picks up that which you have discarded takes it to a recycle uh, facility and they recycle, they reutilize that which you discarded and bring it back to you. In fact, most of the milk you drink and most of the um, items that, that are boxed items, they look clean, but they're not clean. They're clean, but they, they usually are nothing but discarded stuff that got recycled. And God is the God of, of recycling that can take the worst that can take the ashes and bring beauty, can take the despair and bring righteousness and praise and something good out of the despair. Let me give you an example, so I'll be through. Example number one is Emmett Till. We talked about Emmett Till last week. Remember Emmett Till, who was lynched? That is ashes. But notice what God did from the ashes. That was in August of 1955. But in December of the same year, a woman sat down on a bus. And that woman who sat down on the bus was Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, and that's Rosa Parks, who sat down on the bus a few months after Emmett Till was lynched. Do you know why she sat down? She sat down because she said she was thinking about Emmett Till and how blacks were being mistreated. What am I saying? The, the ashes was Emmett Till. The beauty that came out of the ashes was the civil rights movement. Something good came out of something bad. Beauty for ashes. Let me give you another one. Uh, no, you know what happened last year uh, in uh, Minneapolis. I need not tell you. Uh, and that is the Minneapolis policeman who put his knee on George Floyd's neck. That is evil. That is 
ashes. But guess what happened as a result of that? Because of that one incident, the whole world got mobilized in protest and things in the world changed. That's my city of Louisville, Kentucky, where Breonna Taylor was also killed. Breonna Taylor's killing was ashes, but out of that ashes came this, this movement like we've never had in the history of the world. So out of something evil came something good. Out of the ashes came something beautiful. I'm not minimizing the ashes. We don't want the ashes. But I do know this, that we serve a God who is able to bring something good out of something bad. I don't know why it happens. No one knows. No one knows. But we do know this, that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. Just wait on the Lord. When you see the prosperity of the wicked, when you see the adversity of the righteous, you go to church and get some clarity as a worshiper. God is still in control. Let's pray together. Lord, our God, thank you for your powerful word. Help us not just to hear it, but get it in our spirit and really believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me today for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, uh, we'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Just email us newstart at ssclive.org, and we will get back with you immediately. Again, I pray that you will have a wonderful day. Thank you for being with me uh, today. And until we meet again on tomorrow, listen to me, listen to me. I've got to change it just a little bit because of the grace of God, we're getting new CDC uh, regulations. So let me say this to you, during COVID-19, you stay safe and you stay sane and you stay masked in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you tomorrow.